Um, so, hello and welcome to this episode number <coughs> number 10. It's been a couple of days since I recorded one last time, so I had to actually watch this episode 9 and 8 <coughs> about transparency to kind of uh, remember where we left off. So, <coughs> there hasn't been that much of new things in eBay, which I have seen. But I'm gonna touch upon number 9 about these value changes. So, Dalai commented with uh, a link to a, a diff file, I think, um, <coughs> um, about the reason why it's um, changing in real time. So that's because of this thing, UBO, Uniform Buffer Objects. So it doesn't compile the shader on changes. It uh, compiles when you when you open a file. So we can try test that out. So as you can see, as I showed, it changes in real time. But it should actually take a little bit more time to open files because it has to compile the sh shader. But um, I noticed one thing when playing around with this that um, it's not uh, uh, updating the normal map strength. So I noticed that if I if I plug it into or if I change it from tangent space to object space, it updates uh, the value, but not if I change the value in itself. So uh, if I change this to tangent space, it updates. So uh, pr hopefully that's going to be fixed. Maybe it's not uh, in this uniform buffered object the normal, but uh, I hope it's going to be fixed because that's something you want to kind of test around to see uh, normal map changes. Uh, and then the next thing, uh, I think it was in episode 8 about transparency. So I got a couple of comments from um, people about uh, yeah, this is from Machine. Uh, he's done a great add-on if you haven't tried it yet, for, uh, called Decal Machine. So check it out. But uh, he wants to see alpha clip maps, uh, and somebody else wanted also to see uh, al alpha clip maps for foliage. So I made a test in for that one also. Uh, so this is can this is a huge scene. It's, uh, as you can see, 3.3 million vertices, 2 million faces, uh, 4 million triangles. So it's just trees, uh, three trees that I duplicated. So it's not instances of each other. Um, and we can check out, if I unplug the um, uh, texture, you can see like the leaves with this color. If I turn on emissive, it's also easier to see. So it's just using the, um, I'm just using the, actually the color because I couldn't use the, I, d I don't have a clip mask. So I was thinking of using the transparency, transparent pixels, uh, but it really didn't work. So I'm just using the colored pixel and add a bit of a value. So if I, well, not minus, but uh, when I go closer to zero, it's kind of, it's up on the borders. But it kind of works. It's um, here you can see it using uh, alpha clip instead of alpha blend, so it's uh, cutting the pixels uh, where it where it's transparent. Uh, and if I bring up the debug mode menu, we can see it's around 400 megabyte of VRAM. It's rendering in 130, 140 frames per second. Uh, so it's pretty good for foliage. Uh, I mean, if you have a really large scene, you probably have a couple of these trees, but hopefully you are using instances, either by copying with Alt-D or using them as an uh, object in a particle system. So, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty damn good transparency for foliage. Uh, and I also noticed somebody asked me what system I'm running, so uh, I have two graphic cards, um, two of the Titan X, the first gen, 
I think it was Maxwell. Yeah. And then came Pascal and uh, I don't know which one it's now. I think it's like the third gen Titan X that still has the same name. But I had the first one. So they're pretty powerful. I think it's uh, on par with a uh, GTX 180 but with 12 uh, gigs of VRAM. So I bought them especially for like Blender and Cycles, not for gaming. Would make no sense for gaming, but... So yeah, I have a pretty um, pretty decent hardware to render this. And uh, I think I'm correct when I say it's, it's just using one graphic card. I don't think it can use two to draw this viewport. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it for this episode, and uh, I'm just going to mention also that um, um, Clement contacted me uh, in the, not that screenshot, uh, he's been commenting on the videos and com uh, contacted me on Twitter and uh, just sent a mail, or uh, a tweet, saying that um, contact me on email and I can help you out with this episode because uh, I have a lot of questioning and been uh, kind of like um, speculating what we're going to see in Eevee. So this is going to be great. He's, um, we're going to be on contact on email. Uh, so he says that um, he's current working on uh, screen space reflection. And he links this um, paper that uh, I talked about in episode 3, I think. <laughs> um, so that's really nice to see that uh, it's gonna his implementation is gonna be roughly the same as the paper and EA dice from EA dice about stochastic uh, screen space reflections. So that's why there's no uh, refraction video because uh, when we email back and forth here, I think we kind of he explained that uh, <coughs> to do the reflection part it's smarter to do the screen space uh, reflection first um, because some of that code is going to be used for refraction, sorry not reflection, for refraction uh, and it kind of explains the not in that screenshot but it kind of explains the problems uh, you face with refraction is that um, <coughs> you have to ray trace the scene and save it in a depth buffer and use that information. Uh, and I asked some couple of questions here. Uh, if, if you look, check out this paper, as I said, I talked about it in episode 3, so you can find the links over there. Um, you kind of see a cool thing on page 8, that's um, the, ref the reflection of an object uh, when it's close to a surfer surface is uh, more sharp near the object and becomes more blurry closer to the camera so his reply is that uh, yeah that's the purpose of stochastic method you shoot a couple of rays um, yeah getting closer to the target with more samples analytic is smart based giving the right solution every time so yeah you can check out that paper uh, on page 8 and see what I mean with this question but uh, the good thing is it's gonna He's gonna look at that, so we're gonna have like sharper reflection uh, uh, where objects are close to a reflective surface. Um, and then I also ask about sparse ray tracing because, um, and it's on page 63, and um, they were talking about how they use a, uh, the ray trace a lower resolution and then upscale it, and uh, his answer is yes, we're gonna make making it full res may be an option, maybe quarter res maybe. Because why I asked that question is because um, Blender's viewport can be quite uh, large and uh, to have it re real time with uh, stochastic screen space reflection uh, it could be a smart uh, solution to uh, render it maybe a quarter or half the size and then uh, scale it up to fill the uh, viewport. Uh, so it doesn't become unnecessarily slow. So yeah, um, I'm probably gonna wait until um, I hear something from him and then I'm gonna record a new video and uh, uh, hopefully gonna have a screen space reflection soonish. So yeah, that was for episode 10.
Bye.